Hello everyone and welcome back to our uh, study on John chapter 6. Today we're focusing on the word life, uh, that's the bread of life discourse, so uh, uh, focusing on a key word today. So let's pick it up uh, on John 6, 51, our, our key verse. Let's pick it up at the end of the verse. Um, and Jesus says, And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Um, so that we'll focus on that today. And uh, I've got in the middle of the board here kind of the key uh, verses from John 6 that we'll focus on today. Uh, so uh, in, in John 6, 57 and 58, Jesus says, uh, just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me, and whoever eats this bread will live forever. Now, in past videos, uh, I've always uh, gone to Old Testament background, um, and, uh, but today I'm going to stay uh, only in John's Gospel. The only thing that I'll say about the Old Testament about life um, is that it, the Old Testament is crystal clear. Only God uh, can give life. Only God, that's part of, part of what makes God um, uh, the, the one true God is that He is the only one with authority to give uh, life, to create life. And so as you go through the, New t through the Old Testament, uh, that, that's very, uh, that becomes very evident. But I want to stick in, with, with John's Gospel today. So talking about life, Let's jump forward to uh, John 17, verse 3. And in John 17, verse 3, we get a definition of what life is, of what eternal life is. Uh, Jesus says, and this is eternal life. So this is eternal life, and he's going to give us the definition. That they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So in John's gospel and the New Testament uh, in general, Eternal life, life eternal uh, with God, is very much connected to knowledge. So down here, I've got uh, knowledge. A eternal life, in a way, sort of equals knowledge. Now, um, uh, in, theologically speaking, uh, there, knowledge can be two kinds. It can be imperfect or knowledge can be perfect. Um, Imperfect knowledge is, is what we mean by faith. Not, it's not imperfect because it's lacking uh, or because it doesn't know something for sure. It's just imperfect because it doesn't have the clarity of seeing God face to face. So knowledge divides out into faith, which is what we have right now as we journey towards God. And uh, our faith is perfected, or the knowledge of faith is perfected by uh, the clarity that comes with vision when we're in God, when we're, when we're in heaven with God, and we see God face to face, so eternal life is about knowing God and then knowing Jesus Christ. Uh, that's in chapter seventeen. Then, if we go to uh, John one eighteen, which is the last verse of the opening of the gospel, the last verse of the prologue, uh, we we read this: No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God who is at the Father's side, has revealed him." So, uh, basically, that, that's a way of saying that Jesus, only Jesus, is here in terms of his knowledge. Uh, only the Son, God the Son, ha has that perfect knowledge of the Father. So, Jesus has already, even while he's on earth, he, he has the clarity of vision. He can see God face to face. He, he, he already has what then he, he gives us uh, whenever we get to heaven, God willing. So Jesus is here, and we are over here. Uh, we walk by faith, not by sight, as the uh, as St. Paul says. So um, uh, speaking in, uh, just about our faith, our, our imperfect knowledge, um, uh, Jesus, uh, I've got two citations here, one from John 17, 1 to 3, and then John 15. And John's, uh, uh, excuse me, John 14, 1 to 3, and then John 15. In, in John 14, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, and in my Father's house there are many mansions, so that where I go, where I am, you also may be. So he's telling us that one day the goal of our life here on earth, the goal of faith, is so that we can be in God's house, in the Father's mansion, that we will have this 
uh, there won't be anything standing between us and God. We will have what Jesus has already. Um, and so that where I am, Jesus says, you also may be. And then John 15, of course, is the I am the vine and, and you are the branches. So the way that we get from here to here, you know, in other words, the way that we get uh, to heaven, the way that we uh, gain salvation, eternal life, is only by being connected to Christ. It's only by being joined somehow to the one who already has this, right? The, it's only by being grafted onto Christ that we come to share in, in, in the gifts, the riches that, that he brings. So uh, I have written here, Jesus sees God. He's the only one who sees God. Uh, he is one with God and he is God. And because of that, he has life in himself. Um, so just in the old, as in the Old Testament, only God can give life. So also Jesus can give life. He has life in himself uh, just because he is God. He is the Son of God. And then I've got uh, three more citations here from, again, from John's Gospel. And so just look at these when, when, when you get a chance. Uh, uh, John 1 verse 4 is that the Son has life. Uh, the key text here in terms of uh, uh, the authority of Jesus over life is John chapter 5. And if you, I encourage you to, to read and meditate on John chapter 5 uh, when, when, when you have a chance. And then uh, John 11.11 11 is one of, uh, it's just a, a beautiful verse. Uh, John chapter 11 is Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And in verse 11, he says, our friend Lazarus is asleep but I go to awaken him. This very majestic statement of Christ. Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I go to awaken him. Now, uh, as we hear in the gospel, Lazarus wasn't actually asleep. He'd been dead for four days. But because in the, with the authority of, of Jesus over life, it's only as if Lazarus is asleep. Jesus is the one who comes to awaken Lazarus and comes to awaken us to eternal life. Okay, so... Eternal life, uh, the way that we, uh, uh, the, well, I guess what eternal life means is coming to know God, coming to know Jesus, and we can do that already in this life, even though it's in a way imperfect, but we're headed that way. We're headed to vision uh, through, by, through being joined to Christ. Okay, so then let's go back to chapter 6. Uh, so also, Jesus says, this is 57 and, and 58 of chapter 6, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. And, and, and so chapter 6 in, in John's gospel becomes sort of a, a key. Everything kind of revolves around uh, chapter 6 in terms of how it is that we uh, come to share the life that Jesus has. Uh, and it's by eating the bread, which as he tells us, is no longer his bread, no longer bread, but is his flesh, and by drinking his blood uh, shed for us. So uh, the way that we become joined to Christ, grafted onto Christ, is simply by partaking, uh, by feeding on him, uh, by partaking of, of his flesh and blood, which he offers uh, to us under, under the forms of bread and wine. So uh, the bread of life, discourse, the bread of life, the, the Eucharist, is the way that here and now we get the nourishment that we need. It's sort of like uh, it's the gas in the, in the tank, so to speak. It, it's, it's the nourishment that we need as we make our way from this life where we live by faith to the hope uh, that we have to one day have uh, the fullness of vision. And so the Eucharist is what nourishes that, and, and it's by receiving the Lord his flesh, his true flesh, and his, and his true blood, that are, we come to share in his life. Um, one quick point, um, there's this really neat thing in John's gospel. At the, it's kind of like bookmarks. Uh, I've, I've got up here John 19, verse 34, which is the, when the Lord's side is pierced on the, when he's on the cross. And so we get, uh, uh, and then blood and water uh, flow from his pierced side. So life uh, it comes from the side of the pierced body of Christ. You know, his body is, he, he's on the cross and it's pierced. And uh, I've got this word side circled. And then also in 1.18, we see that word again. Uh, in Greek, it's the same word kolpos, 
uh, Jesus is at the Father's side, and that's why He can see the Father. That's why He has life. That's why He knows the Father, because He's the only one at the Father's side. Then when He's on the cross and He gives His life, it's His side is pierced and the blood and water flow. Of course, the blood and, and the water is a symbol of uh, the, the baptism and the Eucharist, by which you and I come to have life. And so uh, it, it, there's this very powerful sense that we really come from Christ. <laughs> we, the, we as a church come from the body of Christ, the, 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 the body of Christ uh, sacrificed for us on the cross and then raised from the dead is what gives us life. That's what nourishes us. And it's because we receive that body that we also are at the side of the Father. And, and so, uh, you know, we're at the side of the Father and, and, and we can see God uh, with His grace when we attain the perfect vision of heaven. So uh, that's uh, a little... Uh, meditation on life, the bread of life. Tomorrow we'll uh, wrap up our, our session by focusing on eat. What Jesus, there's a very interesting um, uh, meditation on, on, you know, what does it mean to eat uh, his flesh and, and drink his blood? And so we'll round out our meditations um, by reflecting on that word. Thank you.